Thank you for joining us for this episode. Today, we're joined by Oliver Wu, and we're going to be talking about growing an explosive myopia practice on the Myopia Podcast. Optometric Insights Media proudly presents the Myopia Podcast, where we give you the latest myopia research, clinical topics, and industry insights. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome myopia content. And now to our host, a massive myopia manager himself, Dr. David Kading. Thank you for joining us for this episode. Again, we're joined by Oliver Wu. Oliver is in Sydney, Australia. Are you having a good day, my man? Not bad, not bad. Good morning from Australia. Yeah. And you guys probably yeah, yeah, afternoon or nighttime listening to our podcast. Yeah. Yeah. So, in the morning uh, on the way to work. <laughs> So we're interviewing, this is the beauty about doing these international podcasts is yeah. uh, it's in the afternoon when I'm recording this. And obviously for Oliver, it's uh, it's pretty early in the morning. He's about ready to get started and I'm just finishing my day. So that's the beauty <laughs> about getting to talk with this international way. Oliver, you have a uh, kind of a full practice, of a full scope practice. You do kind of everything. But you and I were talking about how you've really kind of exploded in the myopia world over the last five to 10 years. Tell us a little bit about your myopia practice. I've, especially the last two, three years, probably, I think it's been during the COVID time, I would say in, my, in, in the myopia division of my practice, it really, really grew by a really significant percentage. I mean, mm. which also the dollar. I think one thing is a lot of people I, I talk to, they are a bit scared to invest into their practice. Mm -hmm. I mean, invest, which means it's not buying some more nice frame, more better decorations or, yeah. or other things else. I think it's investing in equipment. Okay. If we are willing to invest in the equipment, which means we're willing to invest in our patients. So yeah. this how you can grow your practice in a different way. How do you differentiate yourself? Mm -hmm. And But the most important part, like I think David and me, we know is who we are. We are yeah. the person we need to invest ourselves to make ourselves become a better and more elite or uh, sophisticated optometrist and OD, uh, especially in myopia, uh, to provide the best service with knowledge and with all the science behind us. Um, that's how we attract more people to come right. and to seek our professional advice uh, yeah. for uh, managing the kid myopia. That's how yeah. my practice in the last two, three years grow really significantly. I thought after certain of years, like David and me, after a number of years, 10, 15 years, we don't think we can grow that much because we might grow a little bit, but won't be that significant growing. That's how right, I no. see my practice. No, I think that's, that's kind of the case is when we first start our practice, we're hoping for, you know, 20% growth year over year. But after yeah. you've had your practice for a long time, you're kind of happy with like mm. five or 10% like that, that would be. But for me, for instance, 2021 to have a 45% growth in our myopia management practice, which is already really, really big. But we just said, hey, we're going to continue to go all in on this. Yeah. And it sounds like you have had similar sort of growth in the last couple of years. What do you think has has driven that uh, organically, COVID? But also, what do you, what have you done in your practice to really help escalate that? I think there's three. I mean, I think there are three ingredients in um, not just myself. I think that's I share with people is how you going to make a business, not just a practice. Um, for example, a lot of us are uh, practice owner. Maybe we can call ourselves an entrepreneur. Um, I think three things I'd love to share like, is number one, we have to have passions in myopia management. Mm -hmm. So every day when you wake up, because we love myopia management, you are not going to work. You're going to enjoy life because we have the passion myopia memory. That's why we, we, we go to work every day with passion, with love, and with excitement. Um, this is really very important for us um and also especially the second thing is resilient okay so especially in the COVID time and the uncertainty of the economy a lot of things happening around the world and maybe new the uh, omicron's coming as well or maybe already around here 
So how we have to be more resilient is how we constantly review ourselves, uh, review our practice, how we can make changes, adopt to, the, adopt to the new changes around us. For example, how the social media affecting us, how we utilize social media, how we utilize the latest technology, how we're going to market ourselves. Like resilience is something we have to regularly uh, think about it. Okay. And then the last thing, the number three thing is uh, humility. So how we ourselves have to know, like, for example, how we have to be, be know, know how to humble ourselves and be grateful about the people who teach us, who share the knowledge with us that, we need to be more thankful for the people who are helping us. So, uh, for example, like patients, how we find ourselves, uh, think our, our patients support us to come to see us, bring the kids. And that's a contact lens. I mean, that's a relation we want to build with our patients mm -hmm. and also to our colleague, how we can help our colleague in uh, building their practice, especially during this, this difficult time. Some of the yeah. practices might not as good as we are because um, we are so lucky that, we have the passion, the vision to do myopia. That's why we are more resilient to the COVID time. That's yeah. how our practice grows significantly. And yeah. that's the three things I love all of us to think about is, do we have the passion to myopia? How passionate we are we're in this myopia management? Number two, resilient. How are we going to face uh, difficulties in our life? How we reflect ourselves? And also, we have to be humble ourselves when we mm -hmm. offering myopia management. I think that's yeah, I think three these, I, I think these are, are really good things, Oliver. You know, passion, resilience, and humility. And I think the the big thing I've 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 said, and one of the what are the quotes that seem to kind of resonate is that we we have the treatments that we need for myopia. Yeah. We we really need to just uh, understand and admit that this is a disease. And that's the passion is that once you and I became so passionate that we don't want any yeah. child to become a minus six, you know, if yeah. we can have something to do with it, we should prevent that. Just like we should prevent somebody from glaucoma or macular degeneration. If we can yeah. stop or stop the progression, why would we not be super passionate about stopping it. And once that's yeah. happened, I just can't handle somebody not doing yeah. myopia management in my practice. And I think this resilience is a real key component too, because it's because of those things that we've been able to, you know, withstand uh, some things like COVID, right? They're, they've been great True. things that have held our practice and, and, and given us good steadfastness. And then the humility is understanding that the more we learn, the more we realize we don't know, right? Um, you know, we, 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 we meet as a, as, as a resident team with the residents in our office, and we know we have a good meeting if we didn't answer, uh, if, we, if we leave with more questions than we answered from, uh, from our meetings. And, and that just tends to be that we're always looking for those. You, you mentioned so the, the marketing component. What are some ways that you've reached out to other providers or other groups outside of optometry to grow myopia in your practice? How has this marketing worked for you? What have you done that's been successful? Um, I do. I mean, I always say I do a lot. I'm not like uh, those influencers that uh, like the IG that people really have time to do it, but 2022 you're probably not a think social about, media, you yeah, know. I, I, I don't, I don't do that many, but probably <laughs> two, 2022, I want to be a, like an IGH influencer, like the people who try to post every day. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, um, probably most of my uh, patients, the base are, uh, are Chinese, mm -hmm. okay, was the Chinese. And they use a lot of the, uh, like in Asia, let's spend China, uh, Chinese, they're using a lot of the, uh, the WeChat, the, that social media channel. So, uh, for example, like in Australia, like in Sydney, we have a different suburb, okay? Mm -hmm. Like different suburb, uh, like a county, okay? And each county, like American, each county, they have a mother's group. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm quite, popular i was told i was quite popular in those mothers group um, even about uh about 30 40 miles away i mean those i will always be active in those mothers group when they're asking questions i try to share some question and some information in those group and then the other mother group will share 
share my mm-hmm. information with others group. I think that's is one of the channel that I've been using, um, which which is quite good already for me. I mean, mm-hmm. um, if too busy, I don't think I, I my practice can handle too many new patients that come in. Mm. And I so think IG is something. Did you just say future. that you can't handle too many patients coming in? Like it would be too busy. Too busy. Because that's a real tough problem to have, my man. That's is the that's I've been struggling <laughs> lately. Is I have to find time to see new patient at the same time to look after my old patient. I think that's is something is. I think some of the OD will start notice this issue in the very near future. When you are so passionate about it, you get more patients, more people coming in. So you have let, new patients. Let me help you yeah. with this problem. If you're listening to this podcast and you have any interest in practicing in Sydney, Australia, uh, Oliver Wu would love to offer you a job to help take care of the swarm <laughs> of patients that are coming into his office that he doesn't have time to see. And he can teach you all about myopia management and all about specialty contact lens fitting. And uh, Oliver, I just helped you with this job. We'll get you a whole bunch of people that want to come practice with you in Sydney. How's that sound? That is exactly what I'm planning to do next year <laughs> to probably, they have exactly the same. Next year, probably I'm planning to find a location at least two to three times bigger. Yeah. So do so you think that it's some these, people would join? <laughs> do you think that it's this uh, this mother's group is your number one marketing tool, or do you think it's word of mouth, or what? What do you think is uh, is driving all of these patients that want to swarm your practice? I think these these are the these group of the kids uh, of practice builder. I mean, I was at the the key key patients for practice i would call them a gen c you know the gen c probably is the age between uh, 9 to 25 i've talked about the younger generation gen c so that is something i love everyone to think about is how are we going to look after this gen c group okay they are the groups that people the groups of the uh, there's a group of people they have a lot of mild peer issue uh that we need to look after so the mothers also really care, uh, really cared about the kid's eye and the visual issue and also the future as well. I think that is my target group in the moment. That's how we communicate and talk to them. And they, would, they also shared about how successful the kids being managed in terms of um, the actual length changes or actual length maintenance and also the prescriptions and the service we provide. So that's how we do a bit more like a more in, internal wise or more individualized marketing. Yeah. yeah. Compared to other big group, like David, we shared before about the big group uh, mm-hmm. marketing part. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Oliver, let's, let's say that somebody's got a successful practice. They've dabbled a little bit of myopia management, like you and me, they want to grow 50% next year in their myopia management. They want to, they want to really grow. Um, what, what would you say to them is what, how would you say, you know, how do we grow an exclo- explosive myopia practice in the coming year? The next 12 months, I want to grow 50 or 60% in my myopia management. What are some steps that they can take right now for the next 12 months to be an explosive myopia management year? Number one, number one, I would say to everyone, like you have to prepare yourself, okay? Prepare in terms of you have to understand the science behind myopia, understand the science behind all treatment options. I mean, we have to prepare ourselves. And number two, prepare your staff, okay? Your friend staff, your tech, um, and all the screening. When you do screening, uh, you prepare them as well. And also in the internal, for example, if you're independent uh, practice, okay, like my servant David, so how you do some internal uh, marketing, like some material, some booklet, maybe in your uh, waiting room, some video, how you prepare your practice first, okay? Once your practice is really ready, if, including yourself, so then we can reach out. Now I always say to people, you can build a really, you can build a really good website or a really nice social media platform, but 
every can do it, isn't it? You find a right uh, marketing company, uh, you got some extra money to spend, you can get this uh, the SEO really great in the first three to six months. But the most important part is you can bring patients into your practice, but you do not have what we call the content, like who you are, the ingredients in your practice, the content is really important. Um, you cannot make a practice success. So mm-hmm. the key ingredients of the major, the best marketing or uh, advertising is you, who you are. If you are the great yep. person with content, with knowledge, you are the best advertiser. So you can advertise yourself. People look at you, they know this guy, it's like this practice with knowledge, with care, with uh, science behind, everything's in there. So that's how you make a practice different to other people so the content is very important yeah think, so, uh, so there's 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 groups out there um you know we yeah. we 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 know one of the, the one of the best ones and one a fantastic yeah. group uh yeah. with gary and matt ording uh yeah. kind of leading the group is treehouse eyes and then there's groups you know there's there's individuals like you and i and i think one of the great things about treehouse is they've helped develop a process or a yeah. system that when I want to grow my myopia management, you can sign on with them and they do an incredible job training, you know, and, and, and they've helped establish some really cool practices around the United States. I, I believe they're in Canada already. Um, but, you know, what Oliver just kind of pointed out is, is the real key component is when they go in and they work with a group, one of the big things that they do is get the whole team on board. And that's a real key component. And then educate the clinicians as to the important component. So I'm just going to echo for a couple of minutes what you just said is get your mindset around myopia management. Number one, that it is as a disease and that we can't handle our patients progressing. If you've got a six, seven or eight year old who is in any amount of myopia, they are slated to become a high myopia, increasing their risk factors of pathological problems. And as Oliver and I spoke on our previous podcast, um, increasing their likelihood of not having LASIK surgery or being able to play sports or do those sort of things without glasses someday. So increase changing your mindset and then sharing with your team members about how we can fix this problem for our patients, getting them behind you. You still don't have a lot of patients, but this is something that you're doing over the course of a month or two. You're really getting yourself set up with what are the products that we're going to use, you know, as a patient here or there comes in um, that you're currently seeing, how do you incorporate those technologies for that patient? You're kind of testing out the process of how do we order a lens? Do we see a patient back for a one day three-day, seven-day visit? What's the right way of seeing patients? How do you do training from a staff perspective for, um, for, your, uh, for, for insertion and removal for contact lenses? Where do you prescribe atropine and where do you get it from if that's what you're going to do? And you really establish that, like, this is the process, right? You start writing down the questions that people ask you, the frequently asked questions that you're getting asked. And then you start making up a a word document that says, here's frequently asked questions and here's answers. And you start giving those out to patients. Now we fast forward, you're three months in and you've been doing this. Now you can start making those frequently asked questions into brochures or pamphlets. You can create a video with your, your iPhone and you can lay out for the patients like, this is myopia management. This is why we think you should do it. This is why we recommend it. Make it into like three or four or five different videos that you can post on social media, on your website. You can send out to patients and ask them to share it. After you fit somebody with myopia management, then ask them, hey, would you mind sharing this with other parents and letting them know what myopia management is all about. Now you have the booklets, you have the materials, you have the information. So as people are wanting more information, you can do it. And then I would highly encourage you to ramp up your SEO and to increase your marketing and pay a company who knows how to do those sort of things to help you with the marketing and reaching out to you know, mothers groups or Facebook groups or uh, through Instagram and start sharing that type of content and then see 
how it starts to catapult, right? It's a snowball effect, right? One patient tells another and then three patients yeah. know, and then eight patients know, and then it's 16. And it's this doubling effect that I think has been really successful. But some people just want the 64 patients in their office next month and they're not prepared for it. And then yeah, the, that's, true. The, that's the hot team, as hot. The team ends up hating it. The doctor or the, the clinician doesn't enjoy the process because yeah. it's not been built. And so really, I think as, as you're starting this, this explosive myopia practice, it's really key to build with a solid foundation. And I think you laid it out really, really good about that mindset and the resilience. So as it does grow, you can strengthen the foundation and then having the humility in the process to, to really go about it. I think you laid it out really, really well. Anything you would add based on what I kind of capital uh, capped there from what you had said? I think is important part is uh, knowledge is to share. <laughs> I never own any knowledge. So mm. I own something after I share with you. <laughs> so I, I own my practice until I share with people what I'm doing. I mean, I never own my practice until I share with you guys how, how we do it. Um, I think humility is something very important for us. Um, we have to learn every single day. We can learn from other young, younger generation because younger generation, younger generation see things differently to us. It helps us to think about how we can um, uh, forward thinking. We have to think about what's going to happen and how we're going to change. That's how we make our practice so fantastic and so attractive, so vibrant every day um, that we enjoy to work, our staff enjoy to work. And especially when the patients come into our practice, they're so excited about um, what you're going to bring them, any new yeah. things that you can bring them, any good news. And maybe some new equipment to help them um, help us to manage my people but better. Maybe some more new content design or some new product can make it more effective, uh, increase the efficacy. Definitely, we have to do it with science base. Okay, that's why yeah. sometimes I always say we have to do things with science base. We're not cowboy. Okay, no. so we have to be responsible for all our patients' care, especially younger generation. Yeah. I would last word probably I love to share with everyone is think about what how our practice will be like in the next five years i don't think what think of too long how we can make a practice different in the next five years because mm. how we prepare ourselves for the myopia epidemic okay how we can to embrace the technology like david said is when there's 64 patients coming for next month how prepare our practice to handle mm -hmm. if not and everyone will hate myopia. Your yeah. practice might not be successful. And right. That's is something that I um, love to share with everyone. We have to prepare ourselves. Our own content inside is priceless. And yeah. you and me, we're the best influencer in our practice. Yeah. Oh, I, 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 I think, um, you know, to, to, to put an end to this and is, is really around this, this quote that you said is, I never owned knowledge. It's only there to share. And uh, I, I love that about you, Oliver, is that you're always looking for ways to, uh, to make everyone else better. I've appreciated that as I've heard you lecture around the world and, and, and at conferences. If uh, those of you listening have not ever had a chance to uh, listen to Oliver, I would encourage you to find him on social media, find out where he's going to be speaking. And, and if you can join virtually or better yet, if you can see him live, um, it's, a, it's a great thing. Uh, I really appreciate your contributions to the optometric world as well as the myopia world. Thanks, David. <laughs> and uh, you've always uh, always been a great contributor. Thank you for joining us for this great. episode. I'd love to see you in person in 2022 in America or somewhere in the world. That's right. That's right. And thank you for joining us for this episode of the Myopia Podcast. Make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you again next time. This podcast was brought to you by Optometric Insights Media. If you enjoy our content, please leave a five-star review. And don't forget to subscribe for more great episodes.